Hello traders, hello and welcome to this afternoon webinar. Let me to those who see me for the first time and I'm here to introduce you to Jens and pass it on to him. So just before I pass it on to Jens, I would like to make a brief introduction here at Admirals. We do have the Admirals uh, YouTube channel, so I would encourage everyone to subscribe on the channel enable your notification buttons on a, every single day i do live trading webinars so you are more than welcome to join us if you are not joining us yet although i identified some familiar names and it's great guys so uh, then you have the trading spotlight where you can find all the recording webinar jens myself and paul we are doing i'll share the link with you Please have a look at the chat box below and you will find it. Then we do have the Instagram page. We post on us every single day, real stories, content that it's very useful to you guys. So please make sure you follow us on the Instagram as well. And last one and very upgraded, it's the Telegram channel. I encourage every single person to download it on your phone and engage with the Telegram because now you're allowed it to make comments on the posts and i also start posting some uh, I, I won't say exact trading ideas yet although i'm planning to do it but based on our uh, market life trading analysis on uh, on the on the morning uh, briefing webinar so uh, based on that i just put some updates and you can ask me anything if you want so uh, or whatever content like this one here we put, you can ask everything. So without saying more, I would like to pass it on to Mr. Jens. Hello, Jens. How are you today? Hello, Theo. So nice to be here. And um, yeah, I hope you it's had a pleasure a to week. have you with us. Ah, that's <laughs> <Like too always. laughs> yeah. Um, so um, how, how did you trade um, the inflation report yesterday? Were you surprised? I was, I was, so, I was super, super uh, bearish with the US dollar JPY. So uh, I was on on that, that trade. That was a nice one. To be that, honest, that will be a nice weekend for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 it did, it did. And I was holding some US dollar cut from last week, short. And uh, which one else? It was Canadian. No, it was Swiss franc, Japanese yen also that one but, so but i think and i'm a little um i'm done i think right it's a little, little um extended now the, the correction in, in the us oh so yeah yeah now no 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 everything plays out and also the guys uh they post on the telegram some people they got a good trade so it's it's fantastic mm -hmm. and we are here to continue support yeah let's <laughs> um today so, so shall i share my screen by the way yes so. yes yes so today, um, we okay. want to dig deeper in the report from yesterday. Let me just here, by the way, type something in the chat box. Hi, trader. Yes, to make sure everything works. So if any questions arise, please feel okay. free to, to ask them. Um, and so, yeah, what we want to do today is, in fact, we want to uh, dig deeper into the uh, topic inflation and uh, not just make sure that everyone is on the same page and understands what inflation is about, but also um, what to expect now, um, where we are, why this is, in fact, no big surprise, um, to, be, to be honest, the, the, the rollover we have seen there and, and the, the drop, I think that was yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, the sixth time in a row, the sixth month in a row that we saw a drop after we peaked out around 9% um, in around uh, June, I think it was. Um, and uh, it of 2% uh, of the Fed, but somehow it makes more and more the impression that at least we are, um, won't see um, such a restrictive monetary policy path, um, which the Fed outlined in the last economic projections here um, in December. And uh, probably the more, more expansive or less restrictive path will follow. I think in terms of, of rate hikes, we're most likely nearly done. 
And um, this is, by the way, something which could then drive um, um, further bullishness in equities, but also in gold, for example, and um, something we want to also look at today. Before we start, um, let me please share the risk disclaimer here. So I already mentioned it. It's, it won't be um, solely um, uh, theoretic content I will present to you. So it's not just that we um, will find out what inflation is and and look at um, some 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 nice charts uh, and 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 overlay them and and point out correlations and that stuff. But also we want to uh, jump into the chart and and want to have a look at the markets and how they reacted. Um, and also probably point out um, some ideas in terms of trading. But please be aware that everything I present to you is purely educational here. Um, and I'm not advising you to, to trade any of the thoughts I present to you. If you plan to take, if you like what I, what I present to you and say, hey, that makes sense. I want to make a trade out of this. Please be aware that you take full responsibility of the trade and that trading itself is risky, that you could lose money. Um, and thus, you should be aware of these the potential risks in your trading all the time before you enter a trade. Um, read the risk disclaimer carefully. You can also find it on um, admiralmarkets.com um, in, in um, full length. And also here, um, you, you, you can read it as, as carefully and slowly there as possible. Um, the introduction around admirals, I think Theo already did an awesome job here. So we don't need to, to uh, introduce some um, admirals any further. Um, one world, one broker, very competitive offering when it comes to trading. Over here, I'm located in Berlin, in Germany. We refer to Admirals as the DAX expert due to the very, very competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading. But today's topic is um, mainly probably macro and FX related, probably um, somehow um, um, related also to gold. We want to dig deeper into gold here in this context. Uh, and probably also point out some ideas probably around uh, potential stocks, which could be, which, which could be of interest. Um, but before we start, first of all, I want to make sure that we are on the same page and that we know what inflation is and, and what, we are, what we are talking about here. But one second, by the way, I just have to check out something here in the background. Okay, I see. That's interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, what is inflation? So, in economics, inflation is a general increase um, in the prices of goods and services in an economy. That's what we currently with well, what we witnessed, and then what is coming down right now. Um, so, that being said, the second point points it out. When general price levels rise, each unit of currency buys fewer goods and services. And that being said, inflation erodes the purchasing power of a bond's futures cash flow. Simply speaking, the higher the current rate of inflation and the higher the expected future rates of inflation, the higher the yields will rise across the yield curve as investors will demand this higher yield to compensate for inflation risk. So that's a very interesting because this is something we already went through. That's probably a fair way to, to, to put it. So um, um, what, what I mean by that is that, and this is something which can be seen here in, in, in this chart. This is a screenshot I took from tradingeconomics.com, a website I highly recommend um, because they offer nearly every macro number, data set, data point, um, which might be of interest for you. And, Certainly also everything around inflation, which you can here find. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, that was here. Here's the chart. Um, uh, so a chart from trading economics and in blue, you can see the inflation numbers going back to 2018, as you can see here, but there's also a black dotted line above that. And uh, the black dotted line is the US Fed funds rate. So what the Fed did um, from the start, in fact, of 2022. So they kept rates low for a very, very long time following um, COVID. So this, this drop here, um, that was um, shortly after uh, co the COVID pandemic broke, broke out. And um, what we saw was that the Fed massively reduced rates to um, 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 stabilize the economy, which was um, coming down sharply due to the fact that everything was locked down. 
And um, besides of just, it wasn't just that they cut rates, but in addition to that, they also increased their um, um, asset purchases, their QE program. While on the other end, handing out, by the way, that wasn't, that wasn't the Fed, but it was the US government and the so-called fiscal stimulus. So that was monetary um, um, stimulus, but there was also fiscal stimulus from the government, which handed out, for example, stimulus checks um, to uh, um, 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 the, the, the US population. One example, we could see the same thing happening in, for example, Europe over here, in Germany, for example, same approach was taken with fiscal stimulus, um, 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 which was supported or where the money was delivered from the central bank. And um, that was um, um, countered by these lockdowns. And then we come to economies, uh, economics 101, in fact, um, and simply speaking, we could say, well, there's lots of money now being printed rates being cut while um, nothing is produced anymore. Respectively, um, it's not that nothing is produced anymore, but um, at least there's less production taking place right now. We're shutting down the economy. And in addition to that, it's not just we, we shut down the economy, but also we interrupt the uh, supply chains massively. So, and till, till today, um, these have not been fully restored. And, and some companies who are, who are um, 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 presenting their earnings releases are still fighting with these interrupted supply chains, in addition to the aspect that also the inventory rose um, here in this case, um, and, and which has mainly to do with the fact that um, the overall needs shifted or the, the, the way people consume goods shifted over time. Because what we currently, or what we, what we saw then was um, with slight delay, but inflation taking up or, or ticking higher already over the course from around 2022 uh, and then especially accelerating um, into or into the year after or into the second half of 2021 in this case. So accelerating massively. You might wonder now, um, this has, has something to do with uh, Ukraine in this case, the war in Ukraine and, uh, and, and, and um, the so-called Putin inflation, which was caused or which caused, um, 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 for example, um, 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 short supply, um, especially when it came to, to um, commodities in this case. Well, we've seen that development already earlier before that due to the fact which I just highlighted, but it was then easier, way easier, especially for uh, the US government, but also here in Europe to uh, point the finger over to uh, Vladimir Putin, Russia and the invasion in Ukraine, Ukraine to say, well, this, this is the guy who's responsible for um, this shoot higher in inflation. However, we put this, um, it's a matter of fact that we kept low um, um, interest rates quite low for quite some time. Um, inflation exploded while here, that was especially here in the uh, 2022 then at the beginning of this year. So inflation had already risen to nearly 8% back then. So here on the left, you can see uh, the inflation rate. And then we saw some, let's call it final push higher um, into the, um, June 2021, 22. June 22. And then from there, we started to roll over. The Fed countered this development by hiking rates. So making sure, coming back here to this, um, making sure that people getting compensated for um, the, the, the rising inflation, respectively, market participants saying we want to be compensated. And the Fed countered this and, and started to work aimed to bring down inflation in this case. The big thing about this is now, well, the, the troublesome thing is um, that in the past, what we've seen is um, that the Fed had to hike rates above inflation to counter and bring inflation down, which is currently not happening. So in fact, the Fed does not need to hike further, but
Hello, can you still hear me? <laughs> I hope so. Um, so let me just let me just share my screen. Um, can you, can you hear me? Can you see me? That's interesting. Hi, traders. So uh, probably you can you can just type in something. Yes. So I was I was disconnected for some time, but it seems as if it, this is a this was a local problem at my end for whatever reason. Okay, that's interesting. So it's interesting because um, um, my my internet was was stable. So I, I just checked it. Um, okay. So I just hope that everything. Uh, continues to 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 run as smoothly as possible <laughs> to be honest no, no no idea what what just happened um okay whatever so the last thing um we we talked about was um what's 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 happening or what happened in terms of inflation and, and, and inflation picking up so what you try to do then if um, inflation picks up and let's put it that way you say money um, um, and, 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 and how the money moves around, this, this process accelerates. So um, especially in, in the environment following COVID, uh, we, saw, uh, we, we saw money, lots of money, chasing fewer goods. And that, that is driving inflation higher. So the higher the velocity here in this case of, of the money and, and, and the, the more often it changes hands, the more inflation is getting out of control. So what a central bank tries to achieve then is they hike rates and try to um, slow this process down, bring inflation down, um, simply speaking, roughly speaking. And this is exactly why they counter here um, this, this massive push higher in inflation by hiking rates. So now um, with consumers changing their behavior, recession, employment numbers um, picking up, you, you, you see, um, for example, and this is a spillover effect. We, we talked about this last week when it came to uh, the non-farm payrolls and the layoffs um, in the big tech sector. Um, what, you, what you're witnessing, witnessing here is um, that, that there's a spillover effect and there's, well, uncertainty now looming and people don't really know, will I still have a job, let's say not next week, but next month? How is it in six months, let's say? And due to this skepticism and this, this uncertainty and fear of losing the job, they keep their money at home and they start to consume goods, which they really need, essentials, while um, they keep the money in the savings account, let's say, um, and don't consume or don't buy, let's say, the next iPhone or the next pair of shoes, but they say, well, the, my, my pair of, of Nikes is still fine, which is then, by the way, resulting in inventories building. Let's take Nike as an example, but we can also um, um, extend this to any other company and, and also um, um, to the semiconductor industry and so on and so forth. And that being said, is then um, um, resulting in Let's call it a. It's not a feedback loop, but it's like it's like con inflation will naturally start to roll over due to prices coming down because they have to come down. Um, there's no other way um, around this because com companies will cut prices and um, 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 give discounts on their products, so to make sure. Uh, that people will buy the cheaper products so that they will or they have a chance to bring down their inventory, simply speaking. So now um, what we are currently with Nessing is that this process accelerated. And it's, by the way, something we could have foreseen, let's say. We could have seen that coming. And we made this a topic for let's say months. I, I, I once, I, I'm not sure when we started to make it a topic, but you probably remember that um, in the past we, we talked about, and, and we also talked about, by the way, in the webinar we did together with Paul and Theo in, in December, um, where I said that in, inflation is likely to continue to decelerate, let's say, or coming down. Um, what, what you can do is, um, given what I just described, well, you can say, Let's have a look at, in this case, we're looking at the manufacturing sector, but we can see the same happening in the non-manufacturing world also. Um, the thing is that you have um, not just the ISM numbers, for example, but there's also subcomponents. And these subcomponents um, include, for example, employment, but also pay prices. 
if the manufacturing sector and the subcomponent, the pay prices component is coming down, um, well, it makes sense to say, well, let's overlay this, this uh, pay prices component um, here with the inflation. In this case, we have um, inflation in black, while um, the, the pay prices, US um, my, ISM manufacturing price paid um, here is in blue. And you can see that there is um, not a gap, but um, 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 it's like a, like a, um, what's the word for this? Um, it, there's a delay. That's probably the right way to put it. So there's a delay. Pay prices come down and they come down since the early 2022s. That was, by the way, let's come back to this chart. That was the, the starting point of the massive acceleration in terms of the, the Fed's fund rate when they when they're massively hiked rates, while prices were already coming down. So that was a process which um, reinforced itself. And we continue continued to come down while I said already earlier, and that was around when we are still above 8% with inflation, that rather sooner than later, the black dotted line or inflation rate will follow the pay prices because this is naturally driving prices lower. And so that being said, it's ne not necessary, let's say, that the Fed continues to hike rates aggressively above the inflation rate to bring inflation down, but that this natural process right now um, plays out itself, let's say, without the, the, the Fed going completely, let's say, berserk and, and, and hiking rates to uh, levels beyond everything and, con and, and, and thus adding fuel to the fire, which we um, saw um, 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 starting to, 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 um, to build over the year of 2022, for example, especially in equities and especially in the tech sector with um, um, stock prices coming aggressively down. So having this, um, um, having that sad now the question is what what comes next and um there's now well there's now now, now a process taking place um uh, and and where we need to see how things play out in the next month or in the following months let's say in the first quarter um it somehow seems likely uh, that the inflation continues to drop in this case and that we are continually seeing and potentially pushing to and below 5%, um, which would then mean that the Fed does not need to continue to hike rates um, any further. Well, I mean, let me just check out here. Okay, once again, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Um, let me just open open here um, a trading economics, and then we have a look at the inflation and the uh, potential peak out, which is currently um, happening right here. And um, so that being said, now, by the way, I forgot one tab to open, Fed projections. And this is something I want to have a look at here. And it's this is from June, but we want to have a look at it from Okay, it was, I, I think it was the 14th, right? Yes, it was the 14th, it wasn't the 15th. So we have to change the date, only the date, and then we get the economic projections. And we, we're not really, we don't really care about the economic projections, but it's more like we care about the dot plot in this case. Um, so we, we already pointed out what this is. Um, this is the FOMC participants assessment of appropriate monetary policy midpoint of target range or target level for the federal FUD, the, the, the Fed funds rate. So that means each dot is one Fed member. And uh, this, this, this table here gives an idea on where does each Fed member at the end of the respective year, in this case, 2023, see the Fed rates, Fed funds rates in this case. And you see the majority here can be found between 500 to 525 basis points. So this is where, where they expect um, 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 rates to be at the end of this year. See, right now we are coming down. Okay, so we are, we are coming closer to this point um, of 5%, the, the level which the Fed, given the, the history, needs to hike rates to um, so that inflation is um, under control again. Let's probably, probably put it that way. So right now, the speculation which is taking place and which you can see, especially when looking, for example, at gold, um, you can see that, that, that gold, let's point this out here, that gold already pushed significantly higher over the course of um, the last 
months, in fact. So here, this acceleration against 1,600, 630 around, um, this started already in, in um, November. Uh, in November, we, we saw some first aggressive pushes higher, and we continue to trade higher from there. And that was um, when inflation came in here at... 7.7%, so below 8%. That was, can we still see it here? Yeah, so, oh, no, no, it was yesterday. It was achievable. Um, we, we could see it here, but but we came in significantly below expectations, which so, showed that inflation was coming down more aggressively. And um, that being said, made it more unlikely. And given the fact that the market itself, the equity market, stock market, but also um, when it comes to gold or FX, it's a discounting mechanism. That means like it's projecting into the future. And if the future, what we get to see is what the market expects, in fact, in the near future to happen. So that being said, it means nothing more than um, the market is expecting um, 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 a policy, monetary policy path, which is driving gold prices higher over the course of the next six to 12 months in this case. So, and that being said, um, explains what's happening right here. So the market is speculating that inflation continues to come in lower and that the Fed will stop hiking rates rather sooner than later. Um, and this is exactly what we're currently seeing here and what we're, where we get to see this, this acceleration taking place on the upside. So now, again, it's a discounting mechanism. So what we got yesterday, Let's come down to the five minute chart probably. That's a good way to put it. What we got yesterday was this reaction. So we came in, that was around 885 something. We flushed lower, pushed higher, came in lower again. And now we are drifting again back higher. This reaction, especially on the downside, in my personal um, um, opinion, that's like, um, this is like, like, a, like a, um, buy the rumors, sell the news event probably one hour chart, you can see it better. So that was yesterday. We came in already bullish into the event. So the market continues to expect inflation to come down. So what happened yesterday with the print of 6.5 wasn't a big deal, to be honest. But um, the market expected it already, anticipated inflation coming down and in below 7%. And once this is then published, the data set is released, well, it's a done deal already. And that's, this is then usually reacting or resulting in, a, in, a, in a, um, a move which is counter what's your expectation in this case. So should push higher, but we pushed already higher over the course of the last week. So thus we come in lower in this case. So that being said, now um, delivers an idea on what to expect for gold or what I expect for gold in this case after this run. So this run itself is no big surprise for me because I was um, already bullish for quite some time now, expected um, the 200 um, um, SMA, which you can see here in blue, this is the blue line. And also um, the psychological level around 1,800 USD to be recaptured. And the question um, um, was how far will we push higher here on the upside in this seasonal um, 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 or, or positive window, which opened from a seasonal perspective, um, from a seasonal perspective between mid-December till mid-January, where we are currently, also into the end of January. You, you will see if you if you check this out. We, we also had one trading spotlight webinar. Some of you probably recall this um, on seasonality and how to how to um, 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 draw or, or why they occur and also how to, to 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 create charts around this. And once you do this for gold, for example, you can also just Google um, seasonality in gold, for example. That's probably an easy way to, to do it. And so you don't need to do it yourself in, in Excel. But here in this context, you, you can you can create this chart yourself. And you will see that into the end of the year and also into the start of each year for a course of the last 30, 35 years, something, um, you see that gold performs extraordinarily well in this environment for whatever reason, in fact, but there's a clear seasonality which, which plays out over and over again. And um, this is something which we are currently witnessing here. So this is this is one of the reasons um, um, for this drive higher, personally, I think this. And, um, but we now got a little extended and got a little ahead of ourselves, probably. That's a good way to put it. So I think um, this trend line here in, 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 in um, purple, is uh, the trend line to watch out. And I could imagine, in fact, now we are rolling over and seeing a retest of this line, probably see a retest of 870, so 1,870, probably 
a test of the region around 840, 850, something like that. But if we hold this level, this is probably then an interesting region to trade against um, and expect a deep run back above 1,900 and probably even 2,000 USD in the course of the next weeks or months. Now you might wonder, okay, where, where does this impulse come from? So um, um, why, do you, why do you expect this? Why do you look that bullish um, into the future? Or what do you expect, especially in terms of inflation? And, and also what do you expect in terms of the uh, rhetoric being used um, from, from um, official Fed members? So that makes sense then to look over here into the economic projection and, and also realize what the market is expecting already, which was priced in, baked into the price already. But also, in addition to that, um, what we should expect at the net, next FAT meeting, which takes place at the 1st of February. Um, I headed over now to the um, so-called FAT watch tool. So the FAT watch tool in this context, it um, um, gives us an idea on the likelihood of, um, or not the likelihood, but what market participants expect the Fed to do at the next meeting, at the respective date. So let's say at the 1st of, of, of February, so which is taking place next week, Wednesday, in two weeks then, um, they expect the Fed to hike rates another 25 basis points with a likelihood of 93%. That was a number, by the way, one week earlier, we were at only 75%. In this context. Um, so it increased given how inflation came in. Um, and that being said, is one of the drivers, personally, I think that um, one of the drivers higher here in this context for gold on the upside, which is also adding fuel and is also driving, for example, the US dollar lower. As Theo mentioned at the beginning, you, you probably have wondered coming back, for example, to or yeah, coming to the FX market, you've also seen what we um, 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 got here in Euro USD with this push above um, 108. It's not euro strength, but it's more it's it's US dollar weakness. It's a it's it's, it's US dollar right now where an anticipation is taking place, um, where market participants say, well, the Fed is likely to hike further, but not as aggressive as she did over the course of the years 2022, um, which certainly added massively to this run lower here, especially, um, well, not especially, but here from January onwards. In fact, we started out at around 115 and dropped to as low as 95. Um, and then from there, we, we're in the, right now seeing a bounce. But um, while here there was the fat end, there was also certainly Euro weakness and a, and a dark outlook for the overall European economy. Um, um, commodity prices, gas prices shooting up due to the uh, war in Ukraine, war in Europe, certainly. Um, in addition to that, and given the fact that the biggest economy in Europe, Germany, um, um, relies heavily on cheap Russian gas in this case, and cheap um, um, gas prices due to the fact that, that we're um, 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 an industry-focused um, economy in this case. So deep recession looming for Germany and thus for the Eurozone in, in general. Um, and everything lined up perfectly for the euro being sold off, while the overall outlook for the economy probably has lightened up a little, let's say, because um, energy prices came down, I would say um, the overall outlook continues to stay very dark. Um, and it's not just it continues to, to, to look at very dark, but also um, that the ECB probably overshot last month with their um, ECB, um, with their rate decision and the rhetoric. It wasn't the rate decision itself, it was more the rhetoric which was used. It was more like the rhetoric where, where they said, you know what, um, we are about to start now hiking rates aggressively um, because we have to, because um, inflation got out of control above 10%. Coming down already at the beginning of the year, you probably have seen that um, um, here in, in Germany, inflation came in below below 10%, yeah, sure, below 10%. It wasn't below 9%, it was below 9% in Germany. But um, the thing is um, that they probably overshot a little and they will likely um, they will likely say something at the meeting, which is taking place, I think, at the 2nd of February. I'm not really sure about this, but it is, it's uh, after, I think it's one day after um, um, the Fed then on the, the 1st. Um, they will come up with something like, well, guys, yes, but we potentially peaked out in inflation-wise, and thus we're not that. I mean, we continue to hike rates, but 
we and the reason why they say that is not because inflation peaked, but um, because um, they 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 um, they have a look, they had a look, and they still have a look at the developments in the southern periphery and here Italian yields, uh, especially Italian yields, and with them shooting higher and, and potentially um, acting as kind of a well, how can I say that? Um, acting as kind of a It's it's really fearsome to be honest. If if, if um, the the um, yield situation, the bond market in Italy explodes um, or implodes, it's more like an implosion in this case. They have to be really, 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 really careful about hiking rates um, too aggressive, since this is driving, especially also in terms of their um, 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 QE program, for example, um, to step too aggressively back from their willingness to buy, especially Italian bonds, because the shooting higher in yields here um, um, is potentially um, worsening the overall situation um, in Italy in general, economy-wise. And um, so that being said, I, it seems likely that there will be a rhetoric which is softer, let's say, from a from a, um, a monetary policy outlook, which is potentially then resulting in the push lower here. While in addition to that, the U.S. dollar weakness we've seen here is probably a little extended. Probably a better way to to look at this is um, let's have a look here at bar chart. And the reason I do that is because we also have an idea here. Futures. And then we look at the commitment of traders report. And we look at the US dollar index here in this context. And um, so you can see here uh, the, the uh, green line in this case is the big specs and how they're um, positioned. They're still net long, the US dollar. And the US dollar peaked out. That was around um, September, peaked out around one, 115 is US dollar index future and came down to 102. If we go down, Let's look at, at the last 10 years in this context, going back to 2012. You can see that was a strong line of resistance, which we broke and saw this acceleration on the upside that was um, taking place in May, June last year um, into the inflation peak out. And now we are coming back, testing this formal line of, of resistance here which is potentially now acting as kind of support. So we come down to that level and probably bouncing. I'm not saying we are making new highs, but at least a bounce here against this region makes it likely that there will also be a bounce when it comes to uh, Euro US dollar in this case. And thus we have a chance at least to retest this trend line here. So in, in um, an orange respectively, Probably even if we go a little lower than that, probably we, we also retest here around the 200 SMA. So this 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 um, 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 blue line in this context, even though I favor a retest of this of this um, um, orange line, let's say here in this in this context. But that being said, now brings us down. US dollar, very important to look at um, when it comes to inflation peak out and the monetary policy path. The Fed is following the US dollar. It's usually negatively correlated to gold. So that being said, and and and, and looking here at this this um, um, perspective makes clear why I think or why I should say I'd be really careful in chasing here of uh, this rally on the upside, but wait for pulling to happen because rather sooner than later it seems likely that this pulling will happen. And the Fed at the next meeting won't deliver anything which is right now not expected let's say so they will potentially say something like um we follow our path and we have to continue um to high grades but we won't do it as aggressive as last year and thus um, um underlining the path now with 25 basis points in february 25 basis points in um in march then we see a let's say stall out around 475 to 500 basis points may june let's see what happens and here now, more data is needed. And if data confirms uh, that the Fed has found a top around 500 basis points, if the data confirms that inflation is continuously coming down while the employment situation worsens, this is also something the Fed will have a look at. And also the overall economic data, like retail sales, continue to worsen. This is something then which increases the likelihood that, let's come back here to uh, the Fed watch tool, that into the second half of the year, the Fed will continue or will cut rates, in fact, will cut rates. So this is interesting. Um, you see here, 
right now we are at 425, 450. So this is the current target rate. And we were in June. In June, you could see here the peak out. The peak out was, that was a likelihood of nearly 60%, 475 to 500 basis points. That's where we stood. Um, so that means we continue to push higher, but into the end of the year, we see rates coming down again. The market in this case, so this is the futures market, market participants here, and these um, columns are, um, 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 they are taken out or they, they are, um, um, what's the right word for this? Um, extracted probably. They are extracted, um, they are extracted from uh, the, the, the options and, and future, especially the options, how they are priced. And um, they are saying, well, we, we see a recession here. There's a recession in the US and thus the Fed can continue to hike rates further. Um, and that was also something, if you go back one month earlier, that was here the 13th, on the 14th, we had the last rate decision. Um, you could see a similar, a similar um, um, development. So it didn't really change that much one month earlier. So if you look at here at the, at the columns and then the percentages here, you can see they're nearly the same. This is interesting. Why? Well, let's look at here at the economic projections again. The economic projections, so where the Fed sees the rates at the end of the year 2023, they see it here above 500. So 500 to 525. So this is a massive divergence right now taking place here. And it seems as if the, 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 the um, Fed watch tool and the market, market participants, well, they are really confident that this will happen. There will be a recession in their point of view. So there's, there's confirmation, they, they, they're really, they're very confident that this will happen. Once the rhetoric does not massively change or the Fed does not cut or the situation inflation-wise especially, does not top out and we accelerate further here on the downside, but stall out now above 6%, chances will increase. Um, chances will massively increase that the Fed will keep rates significantly higher for a longer period of time than what the market is currently expecting when looking here at the Fed watch tool, which is very bearish for equities especially after the recent run, but which is very bearish also for gold, potentially here re resulting in a massive push lower. I have to be honest, in addition to, to, this, to, to this outlook, there's also some uncertainty and gold could see some further um, 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 bullishness in this context here, especially um, when it comes to um, um, risk aversion hitting the market, especially. Um, so this could probably stabilize markets a little, but this is, this is definitely, it has to be, we have to wait, we have to see. And that's why I said, well, we have to see how things develop inflation wise, how things develop from an employment situation in the overall economy. Um, there will be a pull in. So I wouldn't chase this rally here as I wouldn't, by the way, potentially chase any kind of, of, of right now rally happening in the NASDAQ, but especially in the, in the, um, in the S&P 500. I'd really appreciate seeing here the S&P making it back above the 200 SMA and, and holding probably even a little higher above 4,100 points. Um, but sometime or we definitely need a confirmation because if this plays out and inflation stalls out and what I just described, chances are high um, that the market will be caught on the wrong side of, of the trade. And as you can see here, the trade is recession in the second half, there will be cuts from the Fed. So if there's any sign that inflation does not continue to drop further um, and that we, we don't need necessarily need to, to, to push higher here, it just needs that we stabilize above, slightly above 6%, around 6%. Um, the Fed could be seen to keep rates at the current level longer than markets anticipated, which is bearish. While if we follow this path, probably this is even too optimistic from market participants. And there's um, a clear sign that there is a mega, let's call it the mega recession forming in the US and, and, and the employment situation massively worsening. Um, and there's a um, 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 expansive or, or more, more um, um, how can I say that? How can I call this? A loser monetary policy path needed. Uh, this is then some, something which could um, 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 here result even in, in rates 
in this case, the, the current target rates of the Fed coming to below 4% into the end of the year, even though then it's not sad or that, that, that equities especially will result bullish or perform bullish in such an environment, because this could also um, darken the overall situation when it comes to um, the earnings outlook for, for many companies in the, in the NASDAQ and could, could really um, um, cause some, some significant trouble. Um, so in this environment, again, coming back here to, to, to gold, um, in such an environment, gold is usually considered a good performer. So I see the, the, the bounce here, first of all, because we shouldn't chase this, this current rally. And then we have to see whether this, this trend line holds. If we hold and hold above 1,800, I think gold is a very interesting um, um, asset here and has potential for a deep run above 1,900 and even a test of 2,000 over the course of the next months. And that's it from my end. So I hope you you enjoyed um, um, you you enjoyed the the the, the webinar and um, in this context. Um, by the way, I, I should definitely here um, share share the screen for contact details. If you have any questions um, admirals related, please feel free to contact um, admirals. So admiralmarkets.com, the website. If you have any questions, shoot out an email, talk to them directly in person, call them. So. One world, one broker. So that means it's a broker which um, um, has um, offices around the globe. And um, that's it from my end. All the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops and um, have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week. I really look forward to it. And um, thanks for your time. See you. Bye bye.